years younger. So we'll see if he can take advantage of that reach. Um, Javier Diaz comes in a lot of fights. Yeah, and you, you see the height, five foot two. That's why he made such an ideal sparring partner for Orlando Canizales. And the Texas rules, of course, the three knockdown rules in effect. The standing eight counters in effect. Ten point must. Only the referee can stop the fight, and you cannot be saved by the bell in any round. And round number one action, we're in Laredo, Texas at West Martin Field. The undefeated Bolillo Botile. A lot of interpretations on how to say his name. He's in the red and white striped shorts. Veteran Javier Diaz in the black and white Yukolo shorts. Chuck, it's almost a uh, sort of a pant outfit, I would say. They are bigger than the rest of his body. A culotte, sort of. I mean, culottes were in style. Round number one. You know, Botile is, is really the scouting report on him is that he's a very patient fighter, very good defensively, doesn't waste a lot of movement, good counter puncher. He'll wait for his opponent to make a mistake before really opening up. Uh, you know, what's impressive about Botile, uh, Arnie, is that in his last fight, which was on uh, May 29th, he won the South African Bantamweight title over Derek Whiteboy. Big won. win. Very big win. Yeah, uh, it was a majority decision, but it happened in Whiteboy's hometown of Cape Town. So, uh, you know, the the trainer, the manager trainer of uh, Botile, Z Munguni, uh, said that he thought that his fighter oh, won oh, all 12 rounds. Oh, 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 and uh, Whiteboy had been dominating the South African Bantamweight scene for quite a while, if you recall. He fought Canizales uh, last year, Orlando Canizales, and had a technical draw in three rounds. So this is a good precision puncher, uh, not a big puncher, but a guy who uh, can uh, outbox uh, uh, box you. And, and, you know, Diaz has got to get inside, I think, and work to the body of Botila. Well, important to point out, of course, he's only had 12 professional fights. He's 12-0. Uh, he's got eight knockouts. So he's got good punching power. He went to 12 rounds, as you mentioned, with White Boy. He's been 10 rounds one other time, and that was uh, with Zolani Makobulo back in April. I I'm impressed with the uh, presentation of that. I faked it. Just came out lucky, guys. Pure luck, and we got one minute to go here in round number one. And of course, coming up after this, the IBF Bantamweight Championship of the World, Orlando Canizales versus Sergio Reyes. First, we got a uh, scheduled 10 rounder, Bantamweights. Sure, either one of these would love to get a shot at the winner of Canizales. And Reyes, of course, the, Javier Diaz, as you mentioned, has not only been in with both Canizales brothers, but has also been in with Sergio Reyes. So he's been there. Yeah, he's been. He was the only guy that, in fact, the first guy to go ten rounds with both Orlando and Sergio, which is incredible considering that these guys turned pro about ten years apart. Yeah. Uh, but you know, Cedric Kushner has, I, I think, uh, a lot of ideas on uh, both Tile as far as his future is concerned. You know, the, there's a lot of good fighters in South Africa who are around this weight class. So, so he's going to get his opportunity. Coming near the end of round number one. Schedule 10. <laughs> near capacity crowd here. West Martin Field coming out to see the local hero, Orlando Canizales, right now. Got a break here at the end of round number one for schedule 10. And Chuck, you know, Javier Diaz, 45, 31, and 1, 10 KOs. We take a look at the corner of Botile. Seems to be missing a tooth there. Somebody knocked that out. In the oh. corner there with him is Eden Gooney, who is the first manager trainer. Over by, I'm sorry. I'm going to say over by Diaz now. It's really interesting. We take a look at Diaz's line-by-line uh, -line record. He has a very good habit of winning in Mexico and losing in the United States as we take a look at action here from round number one. Sort of a feeling out round. Botile came off the left, scored a double right there, and uh, using that reach advantage and certainly the height advantage. Round number two, scheduled 10 rounder, Bantamweights. Red and white shorts from South Africa, Bolilo Botile, or M. Well, you say it better than me, Chuck. How it's kind of a soft M at the beginning. Mbulelo. Mm, Mbulelo. Mm, I practice that. You do that well. Very good. You know, you talk about Suzuki Tiaz and his record uh, in and out of the U.S. You know, he's 2-20 and 20 inside the U.S. and 43-11-1 and one, uh, elsewhere. There you go. So there's a little disparity. But he's fought a lot of tough guys, as we know. A lot of uh, world champions and or contenders. 
Hey, for Gabby in Orlando, for John Michael Johnson, Julio Gervasio. Paul Gonzalez, Bones Adams, Eddie Rangel, and of course, Sergio. Oh, and he just got rocked there. We're going to see what kind of finishing power Bolile has. Fair to Midland chin on the part of Diaz. Gabby King is Alice actually stopped by two rounds. Back in 1984. But look at the distance with Gervasio a year ago. The chin seems to be getting stronger as time has gone on. He actually hasn't been stopped, believe it or not, since 1988. And that was by Roland Gomez. He had a draw with Cesar Soso, a pretty good fighter who he beat previously in the previous fight to that. Well, he must be uh, numbed up because his uh, record not like he's had a great winning record since then, but has not been stopped since 1988. This is not his best weight. Of course, he was best as a flyweight. He was a Mexican champion, also the Continental America's WBC champion. Is that right? At flyweight? At flyweight, yeah. So, what is he, 125 coming into this one? Yep. Palili coming in at 122 and a half. He's got a two and a half height, two, a three inch height advantage. Five foot five to five two. He's got a four inch reach advantage, which he's using very well. They say you lose power punching down. I don't think Patil is having a, that hard a time here. Oh. This is right in the wheelhouse for that left truck. We heard you there. Left hand very low on the part of Diaz. Very low. Punch your way out. Punch your way out. telling him to work the body. We're coming up on the 30-second mark. Time to go in round number two in Laredo, Texas. Scheduled for 10. Undefeated, Bolivar Bolivar. Name I don't say as well as my partner. <laughs> Charles J. Looking for his 13th straight win in his USA debut. We're coming near the end of round number two. Phantom weight scheduled for 10. Very good round for Botile. It seems like he was starting to measure and get the range very good, use his four inch reach advantage. Chuck. Um, hit Diaz with some shots though that you would have thought would have made Diaz go, but like we pointed out, Diaz has been knocked out since 1988, in spite of all of his losses. Yeah, well here you see some of the action, good straight right hand that back Diaz up. I think it may be a little bit off balance in that exchange, but uh, you see hands are knocked down and he's getting hit with that left hook, and of course Botia just have to bring that left hook straight across, he's going to nail him on the chin. You know, one thing about a, a fight like this is that it's going to test your patience if you're a relatively inexperienced the fighter because you know it's not going to get Diaz out of there. Oh, Texas. We've got Bantamweight scheduled for 10 here. Arnie, when you consider that Diaz comes in in a crouch uh, a lot of the time, you're talking about maybe an eight or nine inch height difference between the two guys. So, you know, the say that he's doing that to try to make it a lot more difficult. But, you know, by the same token, Diaz is going to have a hard time mounting an offense from out there. I think he's got to get in under a jab if he can and work uh, some body punching. If he's even thinking about launching an offense, even if you're just thinking about surviving and getting 10 rounds in today. I would think, though, the Botilli would want to get in there and start using some uppercuts, though. That's how you're going to straighten out a fighter like Diaz and make him stand up. Maybe he doesn't have an uppercut. Very you know, like we mentioned earlier, he's only had 12 professional fights in spite of the fact that he just beat Derek Whiteboy and got himself ranked into the top 10. Uh, and you couldn't get better sparring than Botile as uh, you were talking about Diaz being and his Alice's sparring partner. Botile is the stable mate of Welcome uh, Nita, who is the former IBF uh, Bantamweight champ, and also the uh, new IBF 122 pound champ, Biani uh, Bungu. So, uh, you know, I mean, those are guys that you work out in the gym every day with them, and you're going to get a world of experience. Oh, and sparring is real important. If you can spar with world class fighters, you're going to be fighting by the name of Paul Davey. We moved Paul to work out at the top ranked gym 
and uh, for his title fight with John Montez, and he was able to spar with the likes of Mike McCallum, the two Tate brothers. It just made a world of difference. So sparring is very important, and the, obviously the better class of fighter you're in, although you don't want to discourage your fighter at the same time and put him in too big. Yeah, sometimes, I think it all depends maybe on a fighter's psyche. Uh, if he's going to get discouraged by going in there with better fighters, it's, it's one thing. But if he's going to know it's a learning experience, I guess it's another. He can take something more from that. Absolutely. And we got about a minute to go here. Round number three. We're scheduled for 10. Polilo Botile, undefeated, making his USA debut. It's Javier Diaz. Who, uh, the USA has not been very good to him. Well, most of his fights in his 45 and 41 record in Mexico, he's 2 and 20, pointed out in the United States. This is a shooting gallery for Brazil. He's not, as you mentioned, you see where his hands are, doesn't really move the hands so much. He shoots out the jab, throws combinations. He's hitting with a lot of solid shots. I don't know if he's hurting him, but he's certainly keeping him at bay. I would have to assume at this point, as you mentioned earlier, that he doesn't have an uppercut because he's inside there and that would be a way to straighten up Diaz and Diaz is very prone for it. Likes to keep those elbows tucked in real good too. Probably a very good defensive fighter if somebody was on the offense against him. So we got 10 seconds to go here as we come to the end of round number three, schedule 10. We're in Laredo, Texas. It's out of the crowd here, we got a big crowd on hand at West Martin Field, give it deep, give it deep. home of the Owls of the Mexican League. I understand they play half their schedule here, half of it in Mexico. Yeah, this is one of the best minor league ballparks in the entire country, as a matter of fact. It's a great ballpark here at West Martin Field, and it's been great support by the community. They are really behind their man, Orlando Canizales. Big crowd, and you can understand why. Boxing's longest reigning champ. Other stops in the face. A Botilli in the other corner. Bubba, Bubba's one of the best pad men in the business. Uh, he's very important for a fighter to work out with those pads. And, uh, uh, you know, Bubba also knows the opponent very well. He's doing a pretty good scouting. There's no surprises here. Round three. Round number four. Schedule for 10, we're at West Martin Field in Laredo, Texas, coming up IBF Bantamweight Championship. Right now, undefeated. Lilo Botile having his way to Javier Diaz. He's yet to put him on the floor, though. Diaz, as we mentioned earlier, has not been knocked out since 1988, in spite of a losing record during that time. Lilo Botile has eight knockouts. And 12 wins, good right right combination. But Diaz, uh, very durable. Well, let me give you this stat, Arnie. Botile has gone 10 rounds or more twice in his career. Diaz has been 10 rounds or more 45 times. What does that tell you? <laughs> We're, of course, on the Cedric Kushner Sports Network. Referee Rafael Ramos. Had it fairly easy so far. A little more than a minute going by here. Round number four. It's Potile, the red and white shorts. Diaz in the black and white culotte. Actually, over the knee. Could be technically over the knee. We may have to call uh, some school professors in or something. Yeah, Give us a ruling on that. The longest trunks I ever saw were a fighter named Carl Sullivan. Uh, they were halfway down between the uh, knee and the ankle. So I couldn't even call them shorts or trunks at the time. Okay, let's see how see Botilli spinning him right out and getting him against the ropes. Good move by him. Very nice move. Sort of reminiscent. You can tell he's been working with people like Welcome Nita. I've seen Nita make a move like that before. Really keeps those elbows tucked in good. You can't get a body attack started on him. Mm -hmm. Nice sharp jab. You figure this kid maybe within a, a year or so maybe ready for a, for a championship. Come on, come on. 
sort of wondering now, though, if he's getting a little bit discouraged about uh, Diaz is hanging in there. He's hit him with some real good shots, and now he seems to be content to stay on the outside a little bit. Double up on the jab, and when Diaz comes in, instead of working on Diaz, as Diaz gets inside, he seems to cover up, tuck those elbows in, as if he's waiting for an attack from Diaz that never comes, and then he moves back outside and content to shoot the jab. And I'd like to see him start something when he gets inside, Chuck. Well, you know, you know, I don't know if sometimes a fighter like this who, who, who looks like a survivor may maybe sometimes blow you to sleep. Well, he may be doing that to uh, Botile. And meanwhile, he steals round. We're coming to the end of round number four. We're scheduled for ten here in the radar. Now, uh, Botile... Uh, Chuck, it seems to me anyway, at least on my unofficial scorecard, he's pitching a shutout. Yeah. But uh, as you mentioned, is he getting lulled to sleep by Diaz? Not lulled to the point of where he's going to lose this fight, but lulled to where maybe he's going to be content to go 10 rounds. He figures, I hit this guy with everything I had in the first three, four rounds. Uh, he's not doing much once he gets on the inside, and uh, maybe he's short a couple of punches in his arsenal. Well, you know, this may be the first guy of this type he's fought so far you know the 12 rounder against white boy obviously he was the underdog going into the fight uh he has one another 10 round decision and eight of the guys he's knocked out so uh this may be an experience that he hasn't had before going in there with a real super five scheduled for 10 he is in the red corner vote in the blue corner fifth round we're back here in laredo the little Botile having his way with Javier Diaz. We were discussing between rounds. Question is, is he getting lulled to sleep to the point of where he may be content to go the full 10? You know, Chuck, it's interesting. Most of his knockouts have come from the third round or before. And the fights of his that have gone the distance, he went eight rounds, went 10 rounds, went 12 rounds, only one KO. Correct me if I'm wrong, has gone more uh, past right. the third round. That's right, seven out of the eight have been the third round or the fourth. He might suffer from that syndrome a little bit where if I don't take him out early, I'm going to carry on from there. Of course, he has, uh, in his 77 fights, has three knockouts in the first two rounds. <laughs> <laughs> well, he only got 10 knockouts overall. This guy's fought 649 rounds as a professional. And as you mentioned, somewhere in there was quite an amateur career in, on top of that. Well, you know, he fought about, uh, uh, I think it was 25 or so amateur fights. Uh, Diaz, uh, well, how about this? How about this on top of it? He's only 29 years old, Diaz. We're not talking about some old war horse that's 38, 39, or 40. He's only 29 years old. He turned pro, it says here, at the age of 15. <laughs> was fighting 10, yeah, before the age of 16, and he was fighting 10-round right. fights. 1981. Uh, he was fighting 10 round fights before the age of 17. <laughs> so, but he, you know, he was a heck of a, a flyweight, really a flyweight contender. He won his first 16 pro fights. So obviously, you know, here's a guy who's pounded it on a little bit. And when you're 5'2", Arnie, I don't know if you can handle, uh, you know, I know I can't handle additional 13 pounds. Uh, you know, when you're 5'2", it's got to be a lot more difficult. Another question is uh, at uh, five foot five, which is, I guess, medium height, maybe even tall for a band of weight. Mm -hmm. uh, is uh, Botilla going to stay at this weight? Weight in today at 122 and a half. So technically speaking, even at this point, at that weight, he'd have to come down four and a half pounds to fight for a title. Interesting you say that because I was talking with Z, the trainer, and uh, he tells me that this kid is going to stay at, really at the Panama level as far as con contending, uh, contending and fighting for titles is concerned. Because he thinks he's got the two best 122 pound fighters in the world already with Nita and with uh, Bungo. So uh, he sees no need to, to throw uh, Botile into that. The other two guys have to be 22 pounders. And while you started to make that point, uh, Botile threw his first right uppercut of the fight. I'm going to see if he, be interesting to see if he does any more. As we come along, 10 seconds left to go. Round number five. Scheduled for 10. Bantamweights. Moving back to Laredo. Beautiful day here. There was some threats of rain yesterday. Rain 
off and on during the day. And the scheduled terrain here today turned into a beautiful day. Great crowd. As you look in the corner of Bulula Botile, undefeated from South Africa, 12-0, looking for his 13th straight win. He's had eight KOs, as we were talking about before. However, most of them came before the third round. May be content here as we're looking to go into the sixth. With going the distance, a very durable Javier Diaz, Chuck. He's you not know, been knocked out since 1988. You know, also this fight's important from another standpoint, Arnie. I know that you've gone overseas with, uh, with fighters, and uh, sometimes it's a major adjustment. I wonder how much of an adjustment this is, his first fight in the U.S. Good point. Sixth round action. Here, West Martin Field in Laredo, Texas. Coming up, the IBF Bantamweight Championship of the World. Orlando Canizales versus Sergio Reyes. Right now, we've got a scheduled 10-rounder. Bantamweights, undefeated. Julio Botile from South Africa. First fight in the United States. In between rounds, Chuck making a really good point about what it's like to make that long trip, get adjusted to the time zone difference, get adjusted to the different crew, living in motels and hotels for a couple of weeks, strange gyms. Might be why he's going to be content to get a workout today with uh, Javier Diaz, who has not been stopped since 1988. Seems to be bouncing off the ropes, though, Chuck. Uh, Diaz uh, is getting um, some sort of a uh, strange conversation going on in his corner between rounds, almost like they had to force him to go back out there. Well, now he's got him stuck in the corner. Now what is he going to do with it? Maybe he'll throw his second up. There it is. There it is. So you hear it? It comes out there. But he needs to follow up on it. I think it's a punch that it's, it's definitely a punch that he's just learning. Not overly comfortable throwing it, and he's going to test it a little bit. Uh, uh, definitely did. Now Diaz has absolutely no offense going here right now. And referee Rafael Ramos may step in and just at any point during this fight and say, you know, if you're not going to throw some punches. You know, get things working. Maybe give him some sort of a warning, a standing aid. He's got to get something happening. He probably there. knows the fighter too well, actually. Well, you sometimes know, that's he, bad for a fighter, though. He knows that this guy can hang in there probably for the 10 rounds, but is it the best thing for the fighter is the real question. Well, you know, we talked to Cedric Kushner before the fight. Cedric likes this kid. I like this kid, too. I think he's a real good fundamental fighter. Uh, you know, may not have the greatest punching power in the world, but I don't know if you've got to have that at this weight class. Oh, there, down goes Diaz. Oh. And he came back up, which was a mistake. Because on his way up, he got caught with a, a left-right combination with a stick again. He's so short, Artie, you don't know if he's standing or kneeling. And let's see what kind of finishing power Botile has right now. Diaz may just be looking for a place to lay down and what might be his first time he's going to be stopped since 1988. Rafael Ramos looking into the eyes of Botile. Diaz fighting back, Chuck. Almost like it was a wake-up call for him. Yeah, three punches to that man. A little uppercut did right there. Good short punches. Good crisp punches coming off the fists of Bolilo Botile. Looking for his 13th straight win of what might be his ninth KO. We're in the sixth round here. Ten seconds to go. And it looks like Javier Diaz is going to weather the storm and make it into the seventh round. Perhaps the best combination of the round was, was shot in there at the end by Botile. Botile, excuse me. Good, good right hand that turned his head over. Right. If, right if there had been 10 more seconds to go in the round, he might have put Diaz down a second time. Diaz going down in that round and kind of bouncing up and down here, Chuck, as we take a look at sixth round action. That's it right there. Yeah. Well, you know, he's, he, what is he, he's four foot ten when he kneels and five foot two when he stands. Again, watching it in slow motion, he actually got up and down a lot quicker than that. And you can't really be mad at uh, Botilla. Well, he didn't pull a Riddick bow, let's say. Bowed it on Buster Mathis, where it was... Quite evident. Don't, don't run in there. Don't get, get him Stand and, back uh, and bust him up. You hear me? Stand may not have been really even sure. Bubba stops yelling in for information. There's the uh, IBF Bantamweight champion, Orlando Canizales. See Jesse Reed taping his hands, getting ready for his 16th title defense. And he'll be relieved when the whole thing is over, believe me, because, boy, it's been, it's been some last few weeks for him here in his hometown. And we're in round number seven, schedule 10, Bantamweights. 
Getting up off the floor, Javier Diaz last round dropped. Pilo Botile, Mobilo Botile. And as the screen said, technically we're looking at junior featherweights. Although we're told by inside sources that Botile gonna campaign as a bantamweight. Or like you said, possibly go up because the stable is kind of uh, full at that point. Well, I guess he also has the flexibility to go either way. You know, I, I, and, and I know an opportunity has got to come his way because this is a kid that's one of the more impressive fighters in, in, in the weight division that, I, that I've seen. Really, at the end of the way, you've got a tall guy here. Right. But he, again, he, he almost has to take advantage of the fact that he beat Derek White Boy, got himself ranked now as a 118 pounder, and, and, and really, uh, you know, came in today at only 122 and a half, where for a non title fight, uh, 118, at least at this moment, the place he should be. You think this could be a fluky guy for Kenny Dodd? Or the winner of that fight? Or the. I'm going to qualify that, whoever, right? Yes, whoever wins that fight. I thought maybe you knew something I didn't know. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, uh, you know, he's 22 years old. I, I would think somewhere in the next couple of years he'll grow out of this day. The backhand is out for somebody else. And a good right-hand lead by Botile. Knocks Diaz back. And he's got, he should really go to work in the corner here and try that uppercut again. Right now Diaz is starting to throw bombs almost in self-defense. He needs to come up from underneath though. Straighten Diaz up just one time. And a little more than a minute to go here in round number seven. Diaz ready to go at any time as he hits on the break. There's a short left, didn't do much damage. Botile getting that jab working again. There's that right uppercut. Throwing it from just a little bit too far outside, Chuck. Round number seven. We're looking at bantamweights slash junior featherweights. Looking very good in his USA debut in the red and white shorts. Toledo Botile had Diaz down. Diaz hanging in there this round. Round number seven. Scheduled 10 rounder. And you know, in some of these rounds, Diaz is making them work. Two and three minutes of every round. So it's you know, pretty good work for both you. And he's going to live to speak one more round at least. The end of round number seven is in the books. And Botilli is greeted by, hey, wake up out there by his corner. Not happy with uh, what they felt was a rather lethargic performance. Chuck in round number seven, considering in round number six, he had Diaz down and almost out. Uh, you know, I, I don't know. To get to the championship level, I mean, to, uh, you know, maybe sometimes you get there. Speaking of a champion there, Orlando Canizales, that we see a nice portrait of him. Uh, you know, you may have to finish some of these guys off. I mean, you do have to be a finisher because sometimes in a fight, Artie, Artie you're going to have opportunities to get a guy hurt and you've got to be able to follow up on him. And you can, can really uh, throw away those opportunities and you're going to lose a fight. There he backs the edge up against the ropes, coming forward. Maybe he's being a little bit too Came at him patient. rather slowly. Round number eight, Javier Diaz, very tired. Got a talking to in his corner as well as Bolivar Botile got a talking to in his. Was greeted with wake up out there when he came back at the end of round number seven. Botile in the red and white shorts, undefeated. His U.S. debut here. We're scheduled for 10. We're in the eighth round. And, uh, you know, we had talked earlier in the fight about, his, you know, Diaz has not been knocked out since 1988. He's very durable. Look at that. Look at a squat on him there. <laughs> And instead of coming with the uppercut, Botile takes a step backwards, which is probably a big mistake. He's thrown that uppercut now, I think we counted three times. Landed with the two out of three. The third time he threw it from a little bit too far outside. But, uh, you know, the question is, is he being lulled to sleep? Is he going to be happy to go home with the 10-round decision? In as much as Diaz is not what we would call a dangerous fighter, a dangerous puncher, uh, maybe he should start taking some more liberties with a guy who's a little tired. Maybe a little shop worn by this point in his career. Overweight for sure. Uh, scrappy, yes. But uh, somebody that you've been landing at will on all fights. You know, you take him out of there. 
I don't know. I mean, here's a guy that's gone the distance with recently, very recently, Sergio Reyes, uh, Gervasio. Also, you got Clarence Bones, Adams. Uh, maybe it's uh, something uh, feather in his cap to stop it. Uh, just doing a very good right hand, and you know, and we're halfway through round number eight. He's got time, and, and Diaz smiles at him. It takes another right for it. Look at the squatting down there. You see, that's the sad. And, and Botile has to do something about that. And I think what's what's happening here is, if anything, he's being exposed today for being just a couple of punches short in his arsenal. Maybe a little mechanical. Perhaps a little bit too much. Late fight motivational problem, maybe. But still, you got to be impressed. You know what we what we're tending to forget here, if anything, Chuck, is he's had only twelve professional yeah, fights. I, 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 yeah, I like him. I mean, anybody who could have gone into Derek Whiteboy's hometown and beat him, a long reigning South African champion like that, it has to have something. And we're under a minute to go. Round number eight. We're in Laredo, Texas. We're coming up. We've got the IBF Bantamweight Championship of the World. Orlando Canizales versus Sergio Reyes. We've got a very good looking. Polito Botile right now, looking to get his 13th professional win. He's got eight KOs in the 12 that he has already. His he has inviting him into the ropes. I'm sorry about that, Arnie. But uh, he just backed up a little bit. He's, like, he's posturing against the ropes. He's tired for sure. But he also is, I guess, trying to play possum. I don't know if he's really got anything that's surprising for Botile. I think it's more of a stamina problem with Diaz right now, very tired. Rafael Ramos taking a look at very closely as those shots come in, and we're coming to the end of round number eight, scheduled for ten. We're in Laredo, Texas. Cedric Kushner Sports Network. Big crowd. You all want to be on TV, on. You don't know how lucky you are. <laughs> and we're waiting. Coming up, the IBF Bantamweight Championship. Orlando Canizales right here from Laredo, Texas, taking on Sergio Reyes from Fort Worth, the other part of the state. Reyes 10-0, undefeated. And Canizales, of course, looking to break the record of Manuel Ortiz with that 16th straight title defense. Bubba Stotts yelling heavily into the ear of Otilo, and we're in the dressing room as Jesse Reed taping up the hands of Orlando Canizales. Eighth round action here. And, and you mentioned, Chuck, happy to lay on the ropes. But blocking a lot of those punches and hanging in there as we go into round number nine. Ninth round action. Schedule 10. I'm Arnie Tokyo Rosenthal. Joined by my broadcast partner, Charles J. We're in Laredo, Texas. Red and white shorts, making his USA debut undefeated. Bantamweight, fighting at 122 pounds today. Borlito Botile, taking on a veteran, only 29 years of age, Javier Diaz. And pretty much a shutout at this point. But good work, because you know, this guy, he's got to improvise because no question he hasn't fought anyone like this. How many guys do you think he's fought that could do that uh, that crouch? Make a miss over the head? Well, probably not many, which is why he doesn't have that uh, develop the uppercut that we keep looking for him to do, which he's thrown, I don't know, sparingly is even the proper word. He's thrown it three times this fight. Diaz, as we mentioned earlier, has not been knocked out since 1988. And... Uh, Woman muggy here today, but I don't think that coming from South Africa that probably doesn't have much of an effect on Botile. But as you mentioned earlier, Chuck, the travel here, being in a strange country, time jet lag. Yeah, but you have to somehow get used to it because if this uh, guy is going to, uh, you know, go after those big purses in the division, he'll have to once in a while come over to the U.S. I think and fight. Oh, without a doubt. But one of the things that's really interesting, though, is how South Africa has reopened up again and, and uh, in a very short time taking a major place again in world boxing. Yeah, interesting uh, talking to uh, Zimanguni um, past couple of days. He was talking about how now fighters have a little bit more movement. They haven't started to exercise it yet, but... Well, as you're saying, Epotili 
set up this, this recent onslaught here where he threw his fourth uppercut of the fight and landed real nicely. And that's the punch that, you know, has been able to really set up his major dominance in the few times and the one time that he did knock down uh, Diaz. At this point, Diaz really doesn't have anything to throw at him. They're taking him over to his corner. Uh, the tape is loose. On loose the tape situation. To finish that other thought, yeah. I mean, South uh, Africa was virtually kept out of uh, world boxing for uh, close to a decade. And uh, it has reestablished itself. Uh, has uh, a couple of world champions. You hear Brian Mitchell, I think, is coming back. Is that true? Yeah, he's coming back very soon. The former. Looking for Tony Lopez? Junior lightweight champion. Well, I guess Lopez is looking for Chavez at this point. But uh, Mitchell, who defended his title quite quite a few times, I think, eight or nine times. Uh, never never in his own country. That's true. Never defended the title in South Africa. I saw a terrific fight between him and Joe Rivera one time in Puerto Rico. I understand they fought twice, but uh, you know, Mitchell was truly an under, underrated fighter, I thought. He's coming back soon, and uh, I think he's making a comeback fight in Sun City very soon. <laughs> oh, and a good hook off the jab. That's a punch he does have in his arsenal. Misses with an uppercut. Just feels insecure with that punch. But Cook Diaz coming in with a beautiful hook off the jab. Coming to uh, under 20 seconds left to go. Round number nine, a good left-right combination. Bounces. Diaz off the ropes. Uh, and we're going to go to the final and 10th round here in Laredo. And a crowd up on their feet in anticipation of their homeboy, Orlando Canizales, coming here to uh, defend his title. Hopefully, for his case, for a record 16th time, looking to break the record held by Manuel Ortiz. He won the title in 1942 from Lusalica, defended it 15 times, lost it, won it back, defended it four more times. That's good. You're not even reading notes. You know that by heart, don't you? And then eventually lost it to a fighter out of South Africa by the name of Jimmy Vic Carruthers? No, Vic no. Toil. No. What was Jimmy Carruthers? What was he? Uh... Vic, Jimmy Carruthers, if I'm not mistaken, was, was he South African or Australian? <laughs> Jimmy Carruthers lost to Vic Toil. Like that. That's okay. That might have been one of us. Tenth and final round. We're in Laredo. Junior featherweights or bantamweights, depending on which way you want to look. 122 pounds, Polito Botile, and 125 pound Diaz. Botile in the red and white shorts. Basically, has won every round. Had Diaz down. Javier Diaz down in the sixth round. Let him off the hook. Looking possibly to be the first man to stop Diaz, though, since 1988. He get his first win in the United States and improve his record to 13 wins. He's got eight KOs right now in his 12 wins. And Diaz is probably the only fighter who's shorter than the corner cushion. That was a push. Okay, Rafael Ramos. There's a quick warning. He says, okay, boys, continue on here. Slapping hook off the jab there. That time by Wattilian. There's an uppercut. Starting to feel a little bit more comfortable with that punch. Hands very low, Javier Diaz right now. Has nothing on his punches, which has to make you wonder, Chuck, why uh, Botile is even bothering to cover up. Probably just out of habit, and it's a good habit to stay in, nevertheless. Uh, do you think at this point in time, referees consider halting the action? You know, if Fotile would get in there and maybe throw 10 or 20 unanswered punches, and there's only a little more than a minute to go here in round 10, then it might make sense right now, where he could really be staying on top of uh, Diaz and possibly finishing this fight. He's pushing him off. When on the inside, he could be landing shots like that. But if Diaz, he's giving him what he needs. He's giving him, you know, he's giving him an opportunity to do the spin moves, throw the combinations, uh, do the lateral movement. He's there to be stopped, and, and uh, I think Botile uh, has pretty much got it in his mind that this guy's not going to, I'm not going to put him away. Nobody's put him away since 88. I pitched the shutout, looked good on my American debut. Tried out a new punch. Dropped the guy in the sixth. 
and uh, be happy to uh, to go home a winner and a big winner at that. Under 20 seconds, I want to sit back now and let you watch Bolilo Botile as he takes home his 13th win in his USA debut against Javier Diaz. And there you have it. They went the full 10. Botile had Diaz down in the sixth, couldn't put him away. Had him hurt many other times throughout the fight. And again, Javier Diaz, who has not been knocked out since 1988, manages to go the full 10, an exhausting 10, and a very exhausted Polina Botile. We take a look back here at uh, action from round number 10. Again, another round, all Botile. Seemed like if he could uh, just put chair, together uh, more than a two-punch onslaught, could have stopped Diaz that round or maybe forced the referee to stop it. But it's gone the full 10. Unofficially, of course, uh, although I don't know how people could see it other way, we're going to go up to Gordon Wood, our ring announcer, for the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, after 10 rounds of boxing, we have a clear-cut unanimous decision. The winner from East London, South Africa, Botil. Botil. One more time for Javier Diaz. You got it, Chuck. Pretty much a shutout as he wins his American debut, Bolilo Botile. From South Africa goes to 13 and 0. Couldn't stop Diaz, who hasn't been stopped, as we've mentioned probably profusely, since 1988. Got a lot of yelling at in his corner, where they kind of thought he was uh, maybe being lulled to sleep, but uh, he dropped Diaz in the sixth round. We're gonna have an opportunity to talk to Botile, ask him about how he felt about his USA debut. I know Charles J standing by at ringside just waiting to get Botile down there. And uh, we take a look here at the overflow crowd. West Martin Field in Laredo, Texas is of course we've got coming up the IBF Bantamweight Championship of the World, Orlando Canizales versus undefeated Sergio Reyes. But first we're gonna hear a few words from uh, after his 13th consecutive win from Bolillo Botile. Take it away, Chuck. The center of the ring. We're gonna take about a five minute break. Then we're gonna come back for the national anthem. We are here and with the winner, Botile. Very impressive winner as, uh, with the Z. He's a uh, trainer and manager. How difficult an adjustment was this to come to the United States for the first time to fight? Well, uh, for me, it's not a big problem. But for him, at least he has never been in this part of the country. Well, but everybody was nice, and uh, we feel uh, great to be here, and we hope that we to come back again. The guy we've been fighting is a very awkward guy. I've never seen such a strong, short man. Well, of course, he's got all the experience behind him, but that's what I need for this young man. Now, this man is 13 and all, and I'm hoping to have at a big fight for him very soon. Probably with the, with the winner of the two guys that are going to fight now. Uh, interesting that uh, was this the first time maybe in his career where he fought a guy that maybe was uh, uh, primarily interested in surviving the rounds rather than really taking the offense to him? Yes, definitely. Because this man, all of what he wanted is to win round. I mean, is to go round. And they did that successfully. And uh, that's what I think that his experience in boxing to say, I'll be there for 10 rounds. In fact, one guy said to me before we come in here, don't try and knock him out. Because he'll be there with you for 10 rounds. And I proved that he was right. He was there. He could have gone even another 12 rounds. Okay, now what will be the division he'll settles, he settles into? Uh, uh, the Bantamweight or the, is he comfortable, more comfortable in the Junior Featherweight division? I know you've got a couple of other guys that uh, fight in the Junior Featherweight. Well, uh, I think I've got the best guys in, the, in, the, in this division. Uh, 122 pounds. Uh, There's the former IBF champion, welcome leader. 
and the president IBF of Bihana Bongo. But this man, he was going to settle at 118. That's why I'm here and I'm going to watch the two guys that I'm going to fight because 118 pounds, I want to be mine. To be mine. Oh, okay, well, listen, a great performance uh, tonight. Uh, no stepping stone on a bigger things. Congratulations, and uh, we'll see you real soon. Good luck to you. Thank you very much again. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay, let's go back to Tokyo at ringside. Thank you, Chuck. Uh, very informative there. You know, he looked real good and was a lot of what we thought, and we're very pleased and honored right now to have the mayor of Laredo, Mr. Saul Ramirez. And so it's an exciting day here it in is, uh, Laredo, yeah. and possibly an historic one, huh? Absolutely, with uh, with Orlando going up for a 16th defense, and we're confident that he's going to do well here with the hometown crowd. He's an excellent fighter, pound for pound, one of the best in the world, if not the best. And he, as well as you, have to be very pleased with not just today, but historically the way uh, the people of Laredo have always supported Orlando Canizales well, in his efforts. Absolutely. We, you know, we have a rich tradition in boxing. We've had several champs here, but none like Orlando. And we're truly proud of, of him coming here and, and working on the title. And not just the title, bet the record as well here in his hometown. So we're really pleased. And 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 if he's fortunate enough to get past this one, more fights like this here? Uh, absolutely. We're, we're working hard to make sure that that uh, fights just like, like this are, are carried out. But with Orlando here defending in, in front of his hometown and also going for his title, uh, as well as the, the, the record that we're extremely proud and and honor to, that he shows in his hometown. And tell us a little bit about the community. I was quite amazed to come down here and see just how bustling everything is here right now. I mean, there's a lot of traffic going through town. Um, future yeah. plans for the city of Laredo. Well, what we've been doing is, as you, as you well know, we've been the fastest growing city in Texas for the last four years, the second fastest in the country. Uh, and what do you year. account? And, and well, A lot of that has to do with international trade. We do a lot of trade with Mexico, Latin America. And as free trade expands on the Western Hemisphere, we feel that Laredo being the central point for transportation, distribution, and the such, and quality control as well, that this will be a leader in international trade in the Western Hemisphere. So you have to be happy. More growth and hopefully more boxing in the future. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's always great to see you, and well, thanks a lot for having us down yeah, here. We're having a terrific time. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Well, we're getting set for our main event, the IBF. Bantamweight Championship of the World, Orlando Canizales looking for a 16th straight title defense, and he's going to be fighting undefeated Sergio Reyes out of Fort Worth, Texas. And we've got quite a crowd here today. And we're talking about uh, close to sellout, if not sold out already. It's turned out to be a beautiful day. There was some threats of rain earlier today. Had some people a little nervous because, of course, we're outdoors. Fights going to over 100 countries around the world on the Cedric Kushner Sports Network. And uh, Chuck, we had a pretty good 10-rounder there earlier on. I think it's a good stepping stone for Botiele. Here's a guy who I think will gradually develop uh, to a point where he'll be fighting for a title. Who knows? Maybe against the winner of our main event today. Maybe against, uh, you know, maybe eventually in the 122-pound weight class. Although you heard Z just uh, talk about... Uh, uh, you know, him as being primarily a bantamweight, and we mentioned it during the fight. Well, I think, and as we had discussed, he's got to take advantage of staying down at 118, coming off the win off of Derek White Boy. He looked impressive today, but he was with the fighter. Once you again, just can't put away. Yeah. You know? Laredo, Texas. And We're going to go to our national Please, anthem now, being right introduced by our ring announcer, Gordon Wood, as we speak. Great to have him back. In the center of the ring where he belongs, Matias Matt Garcia Jr.
Very anxious crowd here, waiting to 